Tableau 24.3 is merely coming soon. Tableau have launched the page where they go through all the features in this video. We're going to go through it and we're going to try and catch up on all the latest for Tableau. As ever, let's get stuck in. So 24.3 is coming soon. I like to go through this as a rundown of what's available in this release. I'm in the rather embarrassing situation where I haven't even finished covering the previous release. Blah, the previous release. I've not even scratched the surface, but here we are. We're going to try and keep up with it. I've got a month to get ahead of this, I think. So get subscribed, get involved, and uh, we'll try and keep up with the pace that Tableau is cranking stuff out at. Right. So right from the top, Tableau Cloud Manager. Now, this is actually quite nice. What this does, it essentially brings a capability that a lot of customers have had with Tableau Server. With Tableau Server, you had this uh, ability to create multiple sites. Now, a site in Tableau Server is essentially a walled garden that can't see other walled gardens. So let's say you've got a finance team that needs to have stuff on Tableau, the same Tableau Server as everyone else, but they can't have this situation where anything in their environment is visible to anyone else. Um, and they need to create a completely sort of firewalled part of the Tableau Server that's just for them. Sites allow you to do that. You can't share data sources across sites. You can't share anything across sites. As far as the sites are concerned, they can't even see some of the other capabilities. Essentially, only an admin can really see the site and hop hop between them. That's sort of the only person really that can do that. And so it was a nice way of splitting up your server environment across different organizations. Maybe you have uh, one large organization that owns multiple organizations, but those organizations need to be separate. Sometimes you get this in retail as well, where things need to be kept separate as well. So anyway, Tableau Cloud Manager brings this capability to Tableau Cloud, but in a different way. What it allows you to do is have multiple Tableau Cloud instances under one roof and managed with one license portal to distribute the licenses to those different Tableau Cloud instances. So it's the cloud version of that capability we've had in Tableau Server. So it's a really nice touch. I think it's a really, really good um, setup. And you can do quite a lot of the things that I think you'd expect to be able to do. I think it's been well thought through. So it's really nice to see this here. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how that works. You should have maybe even started getting invites to receive this because essentially the way this works is it's got to roll out first in order for you to be able to manage it once this feature is out. So uh, Tableau Cloud is getting updated over the next few weeks. You'll probably see some of the features already if you're lucky enough to be in a pod that has this. I know Canada's had Hyperforce uh, already rolled out so you'll see that um, later when we talk about it but that that is what um, uh, this feature is okay next feature is the Tableau Viz extension now I don't know too much about this let me just make this larger because this is sort of interesting so evolve from legacy reports into visual anal analytics while meeting your users current needs now you can add detailed tables and grid views to dashboard for users who prefer traditional reporting views so what this looks like is a bespoke just if I just open this in another tab, let's go all the way over here and we just zoom into this a little bit. Let's just let's just get this full screen. You can see here that this is essentially one of the new Viz extensions that Tableau have previously announced. That was in 24.2. What it looks like here is Tableau themselves have built something that's super smart. This is very similar to the uh, tables capability that I've demoed previously from InfoTopics, but it's a little bit lighter. It's not as powerful and it's not as sort of well thought through. Uh, but it comes from the vendor, it looks like, and it feels like it's natively supported. So this is great because, um, you know, you've always actually been able to do this kind of stuff in Excel. And this is a huge step forward. So this is going to be one of those features that actually gets undue attention. And lots of people are going to rave about it. It still doesn't mean I think this is a good look inside of a dashboard. The, the problem with these kinds of charts and the problem with these kind of tables, is they kind of encourage people to just have really large views that take a long time to load and no one ever really assimilates all this information easily. So what it looks like though is that you're going to have fine grain controls to be able to visualize within each of these columns. And this, this to me is perfect for killing hacks. Like this, this is possible today, kind of. Um, maybe I'll do a video of how it's possible today because it's very nasty. You can do it with LODs and you can do it with hacks, um, but it's not as nice. You don't get this sort of uh, filters you get at the top. You could sort of implement them as well. And again, that uses an LOD and it's kind of messy. But um, yeah, this is just going to be much nicer out of the box. So maybe in a separate video, I'll show you how I've achieved this with a hack in the past. Let's go back to our main releases. So that's Tableau Viz extension. Really cool. We'll hopefully see that soon. 
Spatial parameters. So what's going on here? Bring the full tab Tableau experience to geospatial data with geospatial support for parameters. Spatial parameters create rich interactive dashboards so users can ask and answer questions about geospatial data. So parameters in the Tableau context are like a data source that's sort of secretly hiding in the background. It's not actually part of your data source. It's separate, but you can use it to drive your dashboard and to drive what's going on. And they can be fed from your data source. That's one of the features they added now a couple of years ago. And so they're really handy because you can use them to really drive interaction and almost bake certain presets or certain capabilities or certain focus modes within your dashboard in order to do something else. This brings that capability to spatial data. But what I'm interested to understand is what does that really mean? Because spatial data is quite complex. For example, if you think about geometries or you think about paths, they actually consist of multiple data points behind the scene. So I don't know enough about this, just looking at it, to be able to sort of really clearly understand what's cool about this. Because, of course, parameters could already drive geospatial items like maps and layers. So being able to have spatial parameters, I think, means you're going to be able to use spatial objects as parameters inside of the product itself. So that will be really interesting to see the interface, how you can add them, how you can play with them. Obviously, this release is not out yet, so um, we can't really go into that. But nonetheless, um, that looks good. OK, Tableau Microsoft Teams app integration. Like This is essentially the Slack variant for Microsoft users. Uh, this is about time. It's good to have native capability of Tableau Pulse, Tableau Cloud, all of that stuff natively inside of Microsoft Teams. This is going to be huge for tons of enterprises. I know this is a partnership with Microsoft uh, as well, so there's a lot of collaboration that's gone in here. So to have official support through Microsoft Teams from Tableau is going to be great. Um, and yeah, you can. I think you pretty much get everything that's currently available in Slack. That, that would make the most sense. There might be a bit of lag between them. You'd think Slack is a sort of first-party citizen as part of the Salesforce ecosystem system but nonetheless um this is going to be good to have so um yeah that's going to be great all right display data model for published data sources oh this is nice so when you publish a data source up to tableau server um you don't always have the availability to see the data model behind that published data source you see the data source you see the columns you see everything in it but you don't see the model this actual diagram and because of all the improvements to data modeling this makes logical sense and if you look at what Tableau has been talking about with Tableau Einstein, you're going to need a capability to be able to make these data models visible so people can actually see the relationships and how these work. So this is a really nice touch. It gives a little bit more transparency to data sources. And if you're using virtual connections uh, and you're using you know, the same virtual connection, you want to be able to see the differences between different models using the same tables. And there could be subtle differences like the way they're related in order to achieve different analytical results. Um, there's so much more to that. I had just had a conversation with Kirk Monroe about the data model, so go ahead and check that out. But yeah, this is a this is going to be a nice touch. So really cool. Google Font Support finally. Wow, I suggest this to Tableau uh, product uh, manager about four five years ago, and then they left, and uh, <laughs> the conversation died. But to me, I couldn't understand like five years ago why this wasn't possible. We've always had this thing with fonts. Uh, and it's always difficult. And Tableau came up with lots of excuses, in my honest opinion, because back five years ago, fonts were just very easily supported. I mean, even if you buy a font file, lots of organizations do this. They buy a font, they name it after their own brand, and they deploy it across the organization. It comes pre-installed on the laptop. For organizations with those fonts, Tableau just wasn't good at supporting them either. And it wasn't consistent because of the way Tableau Server and Tableau Cloud render visualizations. The font also needed to be able to be on uh, the actual servers and machines, and it didn't always come through properly. And I think that's still going to be an issue for Tableau Server. What Tableau is saying here is at least for Tableau Cloud, you're going to be able to have Google Font support. So Tableau Cloud now supports Lato, Monsterat, Noto, Sans, uh, Open Sans, Oswald, Poppins, and, and Rallaway. Um, so the probably, probably the reason it's those specific fonts is because I've actually tested those fonts and made sure they work. Now, as a as a someone who's worked in print design, I did magazine design ages ago. I'm a bit of a secret geek when it comes to fonts. I actually have a video on this channel about ligatures and typography. You can go ahead and check them out. The one of my earliest videos on this on this channel, believe it or not, before I turned it into a tablet channel. These are good fonts. These are good fonts. Whoever chose these have good taste. There are a few fonts that are on here. I can't believe Roboto isn't here. Roboto is just a standard, really nice, good font. 
And there's also a couple of others. You know, Open Sans is good when it coming when it's coming from Google Font, but there's actually a couple of better variants of Open Sans. So I would like Tableau to not just go with things that were in trend font wise five years ago. I'd like to see them uh, adding multiple fonts every single month, giving people more options. And additionally, I'd love to see this on Tableau Public as well. We don't have Tableau Server. That makes sense. Carrot and stick from Tableau Cloud to Tableau Server. But come on, Tableau Public is really where these fonts are needed. Let's be clear here. So um, yeah, um, interesting, good, about time. We don't get gold star for this because this should have been in the product a long time ago. But uh, here we are anyway. Mutable email addresses for notifications. So allow Tableau Cloud users to update their email if they lose access to the inbox to ensure they can still get important notifications from Tableau Cloud. Available in a weekly release coming after the initial availability of 24.3. So this feels like something they have to roll Tableau Cloud out first, then they can roll out the feature that can do this because I think everyone needs to be updated to a certain type of identity. That's what this sounds like. So what I don't understand here is what this actually means. I just read it out and I sounded like I knew what I'm talking about, but I actually have no clue. So let's just read this again. Allow Tableau Cloud users to update their email if they lose access to the inbox. To Oh, okay, I get it. So if you... If you, uh, let's say, oh, I have a good example. You get married. You previously had one type of email inside of your uh, organization profile, but Tableau knows that email all along. You change your profile, but now Tableau needs to you know, be updated to reflect that new name. And so this, I think, is suggesting you can go in and change the email so you can start to get your information back. So this is interesting. Um, because I, I still don't know how it works. I actually have this exact issue with one of my work emails from a long time ago with Tableau's own credentials on the Tableau forum. Like I'd love this on the Tableau forums. I essentially can't get into my main Tableau profile on the forums because I can't get over this. I've left that organization. I can't get into the inbox anymore. And so I can't ever change away from that email, which means I'm just using a profile with an email that I can never address. Um, so if anything ever happens, I've lost it. So it's a little bit of a shame that's not on forums, but this is going to be good for Tableau Cloud, you know, where people pay money is probably where they're going to prioritize their efforts. So that's good nonetheless. All right. Next one, custom domains. Um, this is this is kind of nice for Tableau Cloud. Honestly, um, Tableau Cloud has always had online.tableau.com. Kind of weird because it's called Tableau Online back in the day. Then it changed to Tableau Cloud. Uh, and so it, for me, I've even found myself typing cloud.tableau.com and I'm like going, why does it not work? Because in my head, that's the name. So this is going to be good. Improve end user experience and reflect your brand with custom domains. Custom domains can also help admins meet third party cookie compliance requirements to ensure embedded solutions operated as expected. So that last point about third party cookies, in essence, cookies are really you know strict about how they operate. So if you're running an embedded solution and you've got something in Tableau Cloud coming from online.tableau.com, but your website is, I don't know, thisbusiness.com, you're going to clash when it comes to cookie restrictions because essentially it looks like your content's coming from two different places and that throws a lot of issues when it comes to cookies. With this feature, you'll be able to use a custom domain. So ultimately, everyone will be able to use uh, domain domain. So you could set up something like this organization forward slash Tableau for Tableau Cloud, or you could do tableau.thisorganization.com if that makes sense. That's, that would make the most sense, actually. That's how people have set up server URLs, pretty much. So um, that's going to be a good touch. Accessibility improvements. This is just a constant thing that Tableau are doing for the for the last now four or five years. They've been constantly adding to this. Um, enable users that use assistive technologies to explore, navigate, and interact with visualizations and dashboards without a mouse with three accessibility improvements, OK? Now users can use the enter key to navigate a viz. Cool. We've also improved screen reader announcements and mouse to keyboard transitions. Mouse to keyboard transitions. Okay. I don't know what that last one is. Mouse to keyboard transition. I need to research that. But screen reader announcements are better. That's a good thing. That's basically the way a screen reader looks at Tableau and understands it. You can do stuff to your product to make that a better experience. Uh, and now users can use the enter key to navigate a viz. So this is the idea of um, previously, you could use tab to navigate a viz. Being able to use the enter key, I think, is also gives people more options uh, and it's a little bit more varied. So that's good to see. OK, multi-factor relationships infocenting. Wow, that's that's a really um, 
interesting uh, <laughs> name, infosenting. That's definitely come out of a research lab. I think it could maybe like call it highlighting. I don't know, like <laughs> alerting or something like that. Anyway, uh, receive proactive information in the flow of work without requiring the full understanding of the underlying data model. That's cool. So multifactory relationships infosenting surfaces guidance and additional information about the reliability between fields in use and those in the data pane. So what this is essentially doing is it's like um, uh, like forward warning advice, basically, but it's pulling that through. And it's essentially letting you know that as you're using something, there's there is a there's a challenge in the way the data model is set up that might mean that the result you're seeing isn't quite right. So here we see, based on your data model, the field marketing is unrelated to inventory. Are you sure you want to add this field? So this is not going to stop you doing something, but it's telling you you're about to do something in your visualization where there is no relationship. So it will cause some sort of um, unintended consequence if you're not doing that intentionally. So unrelated dimensions show all possible combinations of all values. You might want to take advantage of that for visualization purposes. So this is nice for this to be able to sort of come through to you. And to be honest, uh, Tableau need to do this to avoid people building things that you know are potentially incorrect. All right. Multiple external identity providers on a site. So on a single site, this, this feels like it's in partnership with some of the stuff we've had at the top about domains and some of the stuff we've had about Tableau Cloud Manager. In those instances, what you might want to do, let's say you have um, an organization uh, they're spread globally and all the users in one region use a certain type of single sign-in and all the users in another region use a different type of single sign-in or you've acquired another company and they've used one type of single sign-on and you've moved everyone to one Tableau server so now you need to support two different types of um, uh, you know, identity providers. So this is essentially what that is. So you can have one site and the way identity providers work is they essentially just you know uh, manage your identity and uh, someone's always explained this to me uh, really, really clearly before uh, using a passport and ticket analogy in terms of getting on a flight where you know getting on the flight is the content you want to look at. Your passport says this is who you are. Your ticket says, yes, you should be here, if that makes sense. So um, I can never remember that analogy in this context, but essentially being able to use multiple identity providers is a good touch because it gives organizations more flexibility when it comes to using uh, information and stuff from different parts of the organization that you know just can't be part of one identity. So that's quite good. Okay, a nice lots of acronyms here. HPE, Esmeral Data Fabric, brackets, MAPR Connector. That's a really, <laughs> that's a really bad name. Long story short, a data connector for whatever this is, right? Connect and analyze the data stored in HPE, Esmeral Data Fabric. Well, whoever whoever's come up with that name should really shorten it. Um, Map R is probably the uh, the name of the service in brackets, but I don't know. Anyway, the connector is available by default in the connectors list starting in 24.3. So you don't even need to do anything. It's just going to be there uh, built into the product. So that must be a, a very specific data source, data connector that Tableau definitely lost deals on. And that's why it's default in the product. So when you install the software, it's just right there and you don't have to sort of um, do anything. Um, the reason it's there by default and not just available on something like the Tableau Exchange is probably because when you go through like a tender, sometimes it asks, look, does this product out of the box come with this support? And if it's not installed by default, then it can't tick the yes to that question. So a lot of the connectors you see are there because of that exact reason. And it does make the software more bloated because you're loading a bunch of drivers and things you don't need. But at the same time, you know, Tableau just needs to work. So hey ho, um, we can we can figure that out. Anyway, key pair authentication for Snowflake. Yes, this is a, a really nice capability inside of Snowflake. Um, it's kind of iffy and hard to set up correctly inside of Snowflake. I know a little bit of Snowflake. I don't know enough about key pair to really sit here and be an authority on it. But it's good that Tableau is going to be able to support it because if you're using your workbooks and you've recently been part of, you know, the Snowflake push to get everyone on multi-factor authentication, uh, that's going to be a little bit difficult if you've got extract refreshes that need to be running. So if you've got a service account, you can put the service account on key pair authentication. The key pair is essentially generated inside of Snowflake and on your laptop and then you keep the key and whatever. And then you're able just to use those two pieces of information here and in, inside of um uh snowflake so um yeah that's basically it you still enter everything else as you would expect and then you're able to sort of use that so maybe i'll do a video on keep authentication once it's out 
external identity provider for Snowflake. Okay, cool. So this is again another Snowflake en enhancement. Um, if you if you're using Snowflake, um, you might have a, a way of logging into Snowflake that doesn't use Snowflake's native capability. So this essentially supports that, allows you to integrate that into Tableau. And so that's a really good pairing. You can you can obviously see that Tableau has a lot of tight integration with Snowflake here, and they're kind of rolling these out. I think as Snowflake are rolling them out. So um, probably lots of people on betas who've already tried this and you know um, like it. Explore explore in Tableau API. What explore in Tableau? Explore in Tableau API. Okay. Explore is part of the Tableau API. That's what it's saying. Empower your customers to start an analytics session in Tableau with a single click from your data platform. Tableau creates a new workbook with a data source based on their data. So, okay, I get this now. So, you know, the Explore tab, <laughs> that thing, that's available inside of the Tableau API, basically. So they can instantly begin analysis without needing to connect to data or to redefine their data model. Okay, cool. So, um, how your customers start an analytics session in Tableau with a single click from your data platform. Tableau creates a new work with a data source based on their data. Isn't this the, is, well, that description sounds like web authoring. So I, I now get what Explore is, but now that description, this bit, Tableau creates a new workbook with a data source based on their data so they can instantly begin analysis without needing to connect or redefine their data. Isn't that just web authoring? I don't know. This is going to be an interesting one to see um, once the documentation is out. Um, we'll have a look and see what it does. Tableau Cloud in the Germany region, this is normally aligned with AWS clusters. So if you have a reason to have Tableau Cloud specifically in the country, then this is good. Tableau Cloud on Hyperforce. So this is one I've been I've been wondering like what Hyperforce is for some time. And I think I think I know the 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 description. So Salesforce's Hyperforce platform is essentially the thing behind Salesforce, okay? It allows them to run many of the capabilities that they run on top of AWS in essence, okay? Now, in order to align Salesforce with Tableau and specifically, I think Tableau Einstein coming in the future, they needed to do this underlying work to put Tableau Cloud on the same platform, on the same infrastructure rather than the current infrastructure it's on inside of AWS. So. Because of this, there's uh, some changes coming, which puts everything under one roof. Now, there is uh, quite a bit that's going to need to happen. Um, your admins will need to sort of uh, whitelist certain URLs, certain IP addresses. And those IP addresses previously didn't change that often. But according to documentation for this, those IP addresses are going to start changing. So once this is out, we'll take a look at it in the video. But just be aware that, yes, you'll get an email from Tableau saying, hey, look, we're about to move your cloud instance onto Hyperforce. That in itself should be a very smooth experience. You shouldn't have to do much, but everything you'll need to do, like whitelisting, you should be doing that ahead of time so you don't have those issues. If you're on Tableau Cloud and you're not whitelisting some of those domains and IPs from within your organization, you might have some uh, communication issues there. So be sure to check that out. Okay, let's go to Tableau Pulse in Microsoft Teams. Again, this is part of the big Microsoft Teams announcements. Everything's in Microsoft Teams. It's literally what we've seen already inside of Microsoft Teams. There might be some slightly diff slightly different sort of implementations that are more specific to Microsoft compared to Slack, but um, you know, Slack is all about channels. Microsoft Teams is just, to me, I just, uh, uh, like Microsoft Teams is just garbage. I hate it, I hate it so much. But anyway, um, Slack is no better by the way, like Slack is not perfect, but I just, I just hate Microsoft Teams. It drives me up the wall, but anyway. Uh, it's now getting the same love as Slack. Now, we have a ton of Tableau Pulse announcements. You can literally see I have a wall of Tableau Pulse from here on the top left all the way down to down here where it says GAI. So let's do a quick fire round of all of these announcements. So Tableau Pulse enhanced seasonality insights. Cool. Tableau Pulse now more accurately reflects the expected range of metrics, recognizes unusual changes in data with seasonality trends. Nice. This has already been released August 2024. So this is more just, hey, we've done this already. Think about it when you see this release. Cool. Tableau Pulse sorting and grouping on mobile. So on the mobile device, the ability to sort and group different things, that's kind of handy. So you can sort and group certain metrics 
uh, makes it easier to manage, especially on that sort of small screen. I will say Tableau Pulse on mobile is essentially like a windowed version of Tableau Pulse. If you actually bring your browser and you make it tiny, you actually have the exact same experience in your browser. So uh, the mobile and the you know web experience are just web windows in the same in the same sort of socket. Tableau Pulse swap between sites on mobile. Okay, so this is cool. On mobile, if you're Tableau Pulse, you might want to go to different Tableau cloud instances. It's funny how they call them sites here because like until this release, they weren't sites, right? Right? <laughs> they were all just Tableau cloud instances. So it really should read Tableau Pulse swap between Tableau clouds on mobile. But what it's saying here is, oh, look, switch between different sites. So let me just read this to make sure I'm not making that up. So early transition between various Tableau Cloud sites across all your different um, uh, content quickly. Uh, with a site switcher similar to the web experience, you can view all your available sites and switch to access. Yeah, yeah, they're calling them sites now, but it's fine. Okay, Tableau Plus Pulse Global Currency Symbols. Cool. So make your tablet pulse metrics clearer and more personalized by showing the right currency symbol that wasn't a feature already um just released in september 2024 okay pulse now supports over 130 different symbols it probably only supported dollars before right it's <laughs> super frustrating <laughs> so maybe yeah that's that that to me should have been out of the box straight away but hey it's here that's really good tableau pulse uh, change mobile time period okay cool on mobile being able to change the time period that's a pretty nice touch Tableau Pulse enhanced ask related metrics. Okay, cool. So they've asked, they've enhanced the ask related metrics. So answer questions extending beyond what Pulse Insights previously detected. Ask about another metric from the same metric definition to better discover relevant insights. So wait a minute. Ask about another metric from the same metric definition to better. Just that makes no sense. Ask about another metric from this. Okay, so if you've got another metric which has the same shared definition, you can ask about it inside of any other metric that shares that definition. I think that's what I should say. So what this should really say is ask about a metric that shares the same definition as the current metric. That's what that really should say to better discover relevant insights. I know I'm not a I'm not an English major. I don't do grammar. But I think when you're writing this product marketing stuff, it's so important for it to be clear to the audience. And sometimes I kind of think the product marketing is written to be clear to a marketeer and to be clear to like everyone internally in the organization and not like, um, you know, your everyday analyst who's like new to the field. Anyway, it's a tangent. Tableau Pulse manually created goals. Okay, cool. So you can set goals, set a goal in the insight exploration page and monitor performance against goal across flows. Analytics professional can restrict who can create, edit, and delete manual goals associated with the metric definition to ensure only authorized users can make changes. Interesting. Okay. Tableau Pulse dynamic sorting and grouping. Sort and arrange your metrics, leveraging metadata such as a metric name, data source, and time range. This feature allows you to organize and evaluate relevant related metrics together. Cool. So you can essentially sort and group. Similar to the mobile grouping, you can essentially sort and group things so it's a little bit clearer. That's nice. Um, you know, sales group, a call center group. That's cool. Giving more kind of CMS control. They're really sort of fleshing this out. You can really start to see them doing this. They must be sort of going through that list of items and knocking them out. You can put these pulse metrics inside of dashboards as well. This is nice. Uh, creators can now embed pulse metrics using a built-in dashboard object available in both desktop and server. Um, that's cool. Um, that's pretty straightforward. Tableau Pulse popular metrics. So seeing the popular metrics through followers, getting a follower account makes total sense. So Tableau Pulse continues to march forward with a ton of a nice quality of life improvement. Some of them are already available. Basically, I think they're getting updates every month. If you look at the dates, uh, we've had something in August, then in September, and the previous release was June, July, August, and July. So I think July, we had a similar update in 24.2. So yeah, I think they're getting updates monthly. Stay tuned. Okay, GAI profile organization. Organize your Tableau public profile. Um, seamlessly organize the visitors on your Tableau public profile page into unique categories using Tableau AI. Alternatively, opt for manual categorization to have complete control. So basically, you can sort your Tableau public profile. No image of what that looks like, but I'm assuming you can be able to, to drag things around, create groups, but also you can ask AI to do it for you. It just feels like another opportunity to talk about AI. I'd rather do it myself. I'd rather curate my experience. If you check out my interview with um, Judith Becker, um, she highlights this very point. She says, hey, look, I want to be the person in control of how I'm portrayed. 
I want to be known for certain things and I don't want to become the person who did that thing if it's not something you want to be known for. So doing it yourself probably makes a ton of sense. Exchange on Tableau Public. Now, this is a weird one. I have a love-hate relationship with Tableau Exchange. Um, <clears throat> in short, I kind of go back and forth with whether I love it or whether I hate it. Bring it to Tableau Public. <sighs> I kind of, I was kind of hoping, <laughs> I was kind of hoping that wouldn't be the way around it would go. Don't bring exchange to public. I was hoping they'd take public to exchange, if that makes sense. Um, bring the public vibe to tablet exchange rather than bringing exchange to tablet. Public. Anyway, you get my drift. Um, this is a good thing, I guess. Um, it's going to help them create a marketplace around tablet public. It's kind of interesting. What this suggests is like, like, you know, from Salesforce perspective, you can't have this thing sitting there free not doing anything for us so let's create a marketplace let's let people sell some stuff and we can you know skim across the top a little bit so that's what they're trying to do pretty straightforward makes sense hey it's a business um let's see how that goes i hope it doesn't make that whole experience sort of muddy and i hope it doesn't change the culture in the community of giving and learning um and you know not too many people start to go down that route of putting a paywall behind everything when the quality isn't great i learned a lot because a lot of what I was looking at was free. A lot of what I was able to download was free. I was able to open a workbook, see how it works. Um, I know there's, you know, people put a lot of effort into their work and sometimes it goes above the threshold where they want to pay. But, you know, in many ways, um, you could say the same about, you know, authors. You could say the same about my videos, as an example. And there is always like a quid pro quo. Like, why are you doing it? If you're doing it for the money and that's what you want, then fine. You know, put it in a paywall. Um, but if that's not what you're doing, but you also want the money side, then it can get a little bit sort of hard to manage expectations between your audience and people you're making it. For example, if I just said, hey, all my YouTube videos are now going to be go behind the membership, I think everyone would be like, wait a minute. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I don't do it for that. I don't don't even get close to anything that's worthwhile there. So, um, yeah, this is going to be an interesting transition. Let's see. Let's see what happens. All right. Bridge support for taco files. Wow, limited. So <laughs> this is this is a, this is such an insider um, update. Bridge support for Taco Files. Okay, what is that? So Tableau Bridge is a capability that allows your Tableau cloud environment to connect to data sources inside of your organization's firewall. It does that by installing a piece of software on a machine inside of the firewall, which can then talk out to Tableau Cloud whenever it needs something. So essentially what happens is, hey, Tableau Cloud goes, hey, I'd like a most up-to-date version of this data source that's inside of this SQL database in your organization. Tableau Bridge says, yeah, I'll do that. It goes off, gets the data, and then pushes it to Tableau Cloud. And Tableau Cloud says, okay, I'm up to date. You can do that in a pool, and you can do that in some other ways. Now, a TACO file is a, an extension file. So no, that's not right. It's a T-Rex file. So what is a TACO file? Let me read the description. A subset of connectors in Tableau Exchange are now enabled for Tableau Cloud through the bridge, making your data more accessible and easier for you to connect to. I don't know if a TACO file is a, con is a data connector file. Supported connectors include um, JDBC. Okay, yes, yeah, so these are all data connectors. So they're all to do with um, specific types of data connections. So TACO is for data connections. T-Rex is for extensions. Okay. So that's, um, that's good to know. Okay. Bridge support for embedded flat files. Oh, that's interesting. So if you have an embedded flat file inside of a workbook and you publish it up, Tableau Bridge goes, uh, uh, I can't do anything about that. So what this is saying is for Tableau Bridge on Windows, embed flat files into your Tableau workbook directly and receive greater access to file-based sources. Save time refreshing embedded Excel, CSV, PDFs, and spatial files. That's going to be interesting because, <clears throat> you know, people, people put files everywhere. So... I think I'd want to see that in practice to really see how well it works. But um, if it's using a universal naming convention and it's on a more open public shared drive that you know exists within the organization, then if you use a fully qualified domain, FQD, um, then you'll be able to point to that uh, server because it will always be running. It's just a sort of a, a storage server, essentially. And then you can, you can connect to that CSV and make it work. So that's a good touch. Bridge performance and monitoring improvements. Um, this is interesting. So they've obviously done a lot of work on Tableau Bridge in this release. I think they're really sort of getting the memo on what's going on. Analyze data faster and with more trust in Tableau Bridge, live queries and embedded extracts are significantly faster. So they've optimized it essentially on both Windows and Linux. Okay. Um, yeah, optimizations, always good. Activity log enhancements. So this is the information you get about what's going on in your Tableau Cloud or Tableau Server instance. 
Here you can monitor extract refreshes in re uh, monitor extract refreshes in real time to meet data refreshness requirements, ensure data is up to date, and quickly troubleshoot problems with the background job event type. So, okay, so there's a background job event type that lets you look at specific things. Okay, <clears throat> okay, so basically this is like um, activity log is a capability that you have to have if you have advanced management. Advanced management gives you more control of Tableau Cloud and Tableau Server. It does different things on those two environments. As part of that update, Activity Log now has the ability to show you what's running in the background at this moment in time. That's essentially what this is saying. And one of those is Extract Refreshes because they're always running in the background. Cool. SAP HANA Authentication Improvements. Um, again, Authentication Improvements Optimizations. Maintain folder structure when mapping data with accelerators. Wait a what? Maintain folder structure when mapping data with accelerators. Okay, <clears throat> okay, I get it. So this is, it's kind of confusing because they've got a map here. But anyway, let's <clears throat> let's try and break this down. Let me read it first and I'll break it down. Analysts can easily get started with Tableau dashboard using accelerator and maintain field structure and categorization. Now this is, a <laughs> this is a really bad update because the word mapping implies that there's something to do with maps. And so they've gone and got a map. It's got nothing to do with map. Maybe the person who created this image thought it was about mapping and has created like a map. But what it is, is when you have an accelerator and you open it, what you have to do is you have to tell it that it, it was looking for this data source and your data source looks like this. That process when you say this field equals that field is mapping. That's what it, that's what it means for accelerators. So this is suggesting that you can maintain the folder structures that exist within the data source when you do the mapping, because previously that wasn't being maintained. So that's what I think that is. Um, we can see the folders here on the left, but it's also confusing as a map on the right. I think that's just a little bit mis misleading, but anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll ignore that. Okay, cool. Uh, migrate embedded OAuth credentials. Um, when migrating from Tableau Server to Tableau Cloud, admins need to be able to migrate OAuth credentials embedded in data sources and workbooks programmatically and at scale. Fine. A new REST API allows you to do that. This feels like the migration SDK improvement. So they've added this to the migration SDK so you can move everything to your Tableau Cloud sites or between Tableau Cloud sites nicely. Einstein Copilot for Tableau Web. Wait, what? <laughs> Why is this last? This is like buried. <laughs> That's a really random. That is a really random order. Like if you've, if you've been to like Dreamforce or anything, uh, this should really be Tableau Agents, by the way. Yeah. Let's get this sorted, guys. Come on. Um, simplify the analytics process with help of a trusted AI assistant. Transform natural language prompts into visualizations. Formulate calculations to enhance your analysis and get suggested questions based on your data. Einstein Copilot for Tableau will work with you so you can move freely between manual uh, drag and drop actions and formulas to edit and communication requests with Einstein. Okay, cool. So, <clears throat> yeah. Pretty straightforward. I'm Sanko Paolo for Tableau Web. I've actually literally just done a video on this, which I released before this video, so you should be able to already watch it. Um, wait a minute. 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 This is 24.3. So what am I not understanding correctly? Because I'm Sanko Pilot was in 24.2. So let me read this again. Simplify the analytics process with the help of trusted Transform natural language prompts into visualizations. Okay, that's Copilot. Formulate calculations, enhance your analysis, and get suggested questions. Oh, <clears throat> sorry. Einstein Copilot came out after 24.2 was announced. So it kind of came out in between 24.2 and 24.3, which is why it's in here. It's like an ability for them to tell you it's in this release. Now, I swear this was already in the current release. If I go to 24.2, you see it's right here. And here they have the prep example, um, but <clears throat> they have Einstein Copilot for web authoring here. And it's an AI system, blah, 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 blah. It should actually be an agent. They didn't do control find replace on this page. But well, I don't get this. What is this? It's the same header. Simplify the analysis press with the help of a trusted transform natural language prompts. Okay, that's what it does. I'm going to have a table work with you. So you can move freely between manual drag and drop actions and formula editing to communicating requests within Einstein. Okay. I don't understand what's new here. I don't know. If you know, let me know in the comments. 
Thank you. That's it. We've been running for 40 minutes exactly. We've gone through this whole entire page. Um, if you want to, you can filter these by the different products. It's not always 100%. That's why I go through it in chronological order. Uh, thanks for watching this video. I'm going to cut it short here. We're going to leave it there. I'm not going to do any opinion piece on this. Uh, I'll do that as stuff comes out with release. There is definitely a lot to talk about in terms of what's going on here. I'll do that with Ravi. Uh, we do that probably once every two weeks, so be sure to check that out. But nonetheless, I think 24.3 is going to close out the year in a quite a strong place. I'm really interested in what happens with 25.1, 25.2. Those are going to be really important releases now that we know about Tablet Einstein. I don't think we'll see Tablet Einstein anytime early next year, if anything, my hunch, my hunch is that Tablet Einstein won't drop until 25.3. That's my guess. We'll see. Um, but nonetheless, here's what we have. As ever, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.